Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today I am recording from school. Um, so we are talking about analyzing graphs of polynomial functions. Um, so we are going to look at three or four different things on graphs. Um, so today is not really going to involve a lot of algebra. It's just going to involve analyzing graphs and looking for features and things on a graph. Um, so first thing we're going to talk about are real zeros. So Polynomial functions have zeros based on the degree of that polynomial. So if polynomial has a degree of four, that means it has four possible real zeros. So real zeros are x-intercepts. Okay, so these four points are all real zeros because they're all x-intercepts. Um, there's also unreal zeros where you'll have zeros of the polynomial, but they won't occur on the x-axis, and that's something... Um, we talked a little bit about when we did quadratics. Um, we're not really going to talk about that in this unit, but um, that's how you find the real zeros. Um, so next thing we're going to talk about is uh, end behavior. So end behavior is super important. Um, it's really easy to tell with a polynomial. So all you do is you um, look at the degree, look at the leading coefficient, and you can tell the end behavior. So if your degree is even and your leading coefficient is positive, meaning the highest exponent is even and the number out in front of that is positive, then your graph is going to look like a U shape like this or a happy face, however you want to see it. And the ends are both going to point up. Okay? So my end behavior is the important part of this. This is the new stuff that I'm that we're going over. Okay? As x approaches negative infinity means as x goes to the left. As we go to the left on our graph, so as I follow this line to the left, this is going up, okay? So f of x is going up to positive infinity. That's what we call that when it goes up forever. As we go to the right, as x approaches positive infinity, so if I follow this graph to the right, it goes up forever as well. So it goes to positive infinity. And the domain for this graph is all real numbers, and my range is all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. We're not really focused on domain and range right now because we've already talked about that this school year. So um, if we have an odd degree function and the leading coefficient is positive, it's going to be going up from left to right. Okay, So it's going to be going up from left to right. Um, so it kind of looks like an S shape or a snake, um, so it goes up from left to right. And my end behavior, we're going to go in the same order. So we're going to go to the left first, so as X approaches negative infinity, what does my graph do as I go to the left? It goes down. So F of X is going to negative infinity, because negative infinity is down. Then as X goes to positive infinity, as we go to the right, so as I follow this to the right, it goes up to positive infinity forever, okay? And um, so that's what end behavior is. I'm just looking at what my arrows are doing on the end. Are they going up and down? Are they going the same direction? What are, we, what are we looking at, okay? And then domain is all real numbers and range is all real numbers. Next one we're going to talk about is when I have an even degree with a negative coefficient or a negative leading coefficient. Okay, so that's going to make like a frowny face or it's going to point down on both sides. So as x approaches negative infinity, as we go to the left, as I follow my graph to the left, it goes down forever. So it goes to negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity or as we go to the right, as we follow our graph to the right, my graph goes down to negative infinity as well. And my domain is all real numbers, and my range is all real numbers less than or equal to zero. Okay? Then my degree for this one is odd, and it has negative coefficient. So it's going down from left to right. Makes that squiggle shape still, it's just going down from left to right instead of up from left to right. Okay, so my end behavior for that one is going to be as x approaches negative infinity, so as we go to the left, as we follow our line going in the left direction, um, it is going up to positive infinity. As x goes to the right, 
we're going to follow our graph to the right direction, it is going down to negative infinity. And our domain and range are all real numbers for this as well. So this is what your problem is going to look like if it had it all filled out. Okay. So we're going to have f of x equals negative 2x to the third. They're going to ask for the degree, the leading coefficient, and the end behavior. So the degree is the highest exponent, which in this case the only exponent is 3. My leading coefficient is the number in front of that term, which is negative 2. Okay. So using the charts we just had, I have an odd degree with a negative exponent. An odd degree with a negative exponent is going to look like this. So I'm going to draw a rough sketch of that here. So it's going to look kind of like that. Okay. So my end behavior is going to be as x approaches, we start going to the left. So as it approaches negative infinity, f of x, or my graph, goes up. So it goes up to positive infinity. Okay? As x approaches positive infinity, or as we go to the right, my graph goes down. So f of x goes down, which is negative infinity. Okay? This is what your answers are going to look like on your assignment. It's just going to be written as like a sentence. It's not going to be in a block like that. But that's what you're looking for, the information you're looking for. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about is locating zeros on a graph. So they are going to give you... They're going to give you an equation like this one, like f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x to the third minus x squared plus 1, and you need to graph that. Um, I recommend that you use Desmos for this. Um, I'm not checking to see if you can graph these. I'm checking to see if you can analyze the graphs of these. So um, when we um, are putting things into Desmos, I like to use y instead of f of x. So just make sure you put in y equals x to the fourth minus 2x to the third minus x squared plus 1. So this is our graph here that we got from Desmos. Um, now you'll notice two of the points here are black and the others are grayed out, okay? The black points are the zeros. The gray points are other points that are um, informative to us, but not necessary for this problem. I'm looking for the zeros on my graph. I'm not looking for the um, other points, what those are. We're going to talk about what those are in a minute. So the information for my zeros comes from the x value. So anytime you're looking for an important piece of information on a graph, you're always looking at the x value it occurs at. Because when I'm given a graph, I can always get my x value and calculate what my y value is. So I don't need you to tell me what the y value is, because I can always just calculate that using a calculator. So um, one of my x-intercepts is 0.721, and the other one is 2.349. Um, your problems are either going to ask you for what two numbers do they occur between, um, what are they close to, or to estimate them and round to the nearest tenth. You need to make sure you pay attention to what your problem is asking for as far as um, what you need. But that's how you find your zeros from the graph. Okay, so you plug it in on Desmos, get the graph, look at the picture, pick the x-intercepts, and go. So, uh, relative maximum and minimum is what we're going to talk about next. So, your relative maximum and minimum are the top of a hill, or the top of a mountain, or the bottom of a valley. So, my maximum is up here. That's the top of my hill. And my minimum is the bottom of my valley. That's down here where it says min. So, they're going to give us an equation for this, like f of x equals x to the third plus x squared minus 5x minus 2. And they're going to want us to graph it. Let me bring this up here. Okay, so here's our graph of that equation. So again, you'll notice that I darkened in the two points of interest. Here's my maximum, here's my minimum. Okay, my maximum occurs at one point, negative 1 1.667 and my minimum occurs at 1. That's it. That's all you're doing today is you're just 
picking out the pieces of information from a graph, okay? Um, that's all I've got for today. Um, if you have any questions or issues with this video, um, please let me know. And um, thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you need anything, let me know. Have a great day. Bye-bye.